Welcome to the latest Wax Ecstatic Pack Break. I'm your host, Matt Salmon, and could it really be Christmas in April? Wait a minute, it's Easter this weekend. Why are we talking about Christmas? Well, uh, this is one of the items that are floating around the hobby, and they have been for years, but you're starting to see them more and more. And unfortunately, items such as this particular rack pack are uh, taking advantage of some buyers. So we're going to have a little fun with this particular product, the Faux Throwback, or I guess you can call it the Faux-Back Rack Pack. And you're seeing plenty of these these days, and they're normally dressed up as some kind of a Christmas gift. But we'll have the look at the Faux-Back Rack Pack, as well as the not-so-Faux-Back, but lovely 1979 top set. Now, before I open this up, I'll be honest with you about how much I paid for this because normally I wouldn't buy this, but it was one of those deals where I said, you know, this may be a good lesson for listeners, uh, maybe those who aren't familiar with these faux back uh, cards, but also this would be uh, an interesting look at what is the right type of rack pack that you can find for not just 1979 tops, but also a lot of other past issues of Topps cards because it's not just limited to 1979. But uh, the story behind this is I was on eBay one day and I was uh, keeping track of a few items that I had on a watch list. And as I was scrolling down a search list of an item that I wanted to buy, I actually saw this uh, on eBay and the time was ticking down. There's like two minutes left on the auction. And I think I paid with tax or with shipping, I should say, I think this was $15. So in terms of the value of these cards, I know the Ron Guidry card here, which is in the middle. Now I can't see the back of it. And just glancing at the front of it, like you could give it like a PSA, I don't know, seven, maybe. Um, you know, if you get a, a seven or an eight rating for it, then this particular card almost pays for the entire pack. Now, I don't know what else is in here. We'll find out in just a moment. But uh, I highly doubt that the person who packed this actually put an Ozzy Smith rookie card in here, which, of course, is the big card in the 1979 top set. I highly, highly, highly doubt it. Um, and we'll get into why you should basically just steer away from these particular types of uh, rack packs, the faux rack packs, faux back rack packs, if you will, if you're out shopping for uh, some old uh, vintage stuff. All right, now let's take a look at this pack. Again, the easy way to tell that it is a faux back is the Christmas greeting here, or uh, some of the faux backs also just have this almost like a construction paper almost like a third grade art project look to it. And it says something like sports cards or baseball fun or something like that. That is not the case. Uh, you can also see that clearly it's just stapled here. Uh, Tops and any other manufacturer that made rack packs never took a stapler out. And you can just see that this is basically just some uh, arts and craft, you know, Joanne Fabric uh, Michaels kind of uh, art store plastic somebody putting a nice little gift tag on it and these unfortunately are being uh represented as the real mccoy as this as if this was an actual 1979 tops rack pack which it is not and again in the podcast which will be coming out this friday april 10th we'll talk about what makes a real rack pack and what doesn't but one thing's for sure if you see some kind of hokey little uh tab if you see the staples in it and also, uh, you only have a handful of cards in here. Uh, it is not the real deal. So why did I get this? Well, again, you know, I, I could grade this, and maybe this Gidry card uh, makes up most, if not all, of what I spent. But also, uh, kind of as a public service to our listeners to see why you should not uh, invest in this stuff. Generally speaking, there are very few exceptions, but for the most part, don't even bother. All right, let me take this back here and rip through our plastic and our staples without damaging the card. Sorry, I'm bumping the camera here. A little tight quarters in our quarantine studio. All right, I knew I should have brought scissors in here. Let's see what's in cell number one here. I sound like Monty Hall when I do that, right? And behind cell number one, we have... 
Uh, even though this is just some Joanne fabric uh, <laughs> arrangement here. Oh, I'm so sorry. Gave you a little whiplash there. Even though this is some kind of Joanne fabric arrangement, uh, the plastic is pretty high grade. It's holding in there pretty good. Oh, no. All right, here we go. And finally, we have cell number one open. All right, so here's that Jim or Doyle Art Alexander card, I should say. I was uh, thinking of another card here. So there's the old man, Doyle Alexander. Decent uh, shaped card there. We've got Paul Lindblad, Bob Shirley, and Aurelio Lopez. So not exactly the, uh, the Hall of Famer there. And while you don't have your um, Ozzy Smith, you do have a 79 Topps Padres card. All right, let me uh, manhandle this again. Get into cell number two. Stand by. I said, I wish I brought uh, the scissors with me today. I'm trying to be gentle with this uh, particular pack because this is... This has the Gidry card, the one that may actually be worth something. All right, let's take a look at this Ron Gidry here. Uh, slightly off center, slightly rounded corner there in the lower left. Well, no wax stain on it, so that's good. A little discoloring in the lower left-hand corner. So, yeah, you know what? You're probably at best getting a PSA 5 rating out of this, at best. All right, let's see what else we have here. We've got Richie Hebner. Now, here's a good pickup here. Bruce Souter, early career card. No wax or gum stain on it. Centered. Uh, pretty good shape. Slight wear on the lower left-hand corner there, but not all that bad. Okay, that's that's pretty good. And then we've got Pete Broberg, who we've talked about. It's funny, I was actually looking at this uh, whack, or rack pack before, the faux back, and um, as I was looking at some of the cards on here, uh, I noticed we've talked about quite a few of these players in past shows. All right, again, I apologize for the uh, seismic action here. All right, here is our last group of cards. We got Lee Lacey, okay. Who else we have here from the Blue Jays? Tom Underwood. We have Paul Russell. And we've got our Rangers prospects, Danny Darwin, Pat Putnam, and Billy Sample. Now, one thing I love about this prospect card even though it's not going to be really worth that much. I mean, Danny Darwin did have a pretty decent career. But um, two of these players, Darwin and Sample, are wearing their uh, uh, Toros. Or is it uh, Tulsa? Yeah, this is... Uh, is it Tulsa or Albuquerque? Hang on. Hang on. Or Tucson. That's right, Tucson, not Albuquerque. That's right, the Tucson Toros uh, from uh, 1979. So uh, I love the Tucson Toros caps here. And even though I love the old Texas Rangers caps from the same time, it would have been really cool if the Texas Rangers actually used the Tucson Toros uh, caps, the insignias. That would have been pretty neat. All right, so uh, again, you know, the, the Suter card is the one that's probably worth a decent amount and decent is depending on how you define it here's the star card the Gidry card which again is off-centered it's got a little wear on the corners so uh, does this actually get you anything if you decided to get it graded probably not I mean it might be if you if you put it through the PSA people might be worth a dollar or two when it's all said and done. But I bet the uh, the suitor card is probably going to be a little more worthwhile. Now, what players should we talk about? Because like I said, a, a few of these players I, I know we've talked about before on the program. Uh, so let's see. Let's go with um, Richie Hebner. So we will pick Richie Hebner here. Nice looking card for him, despite being a little off center. So we're going to go with uh, Richie Hebner. Let me put him up here. Let's do uh, Paul Ruschel, the brother of Rick Ruschel, uh, who is equally hefty as Rick Ruschel, as you can see here, uh, wearing the old Cleveland Indians uni of 1978. All right, who else should we have? Do you know what? Uh, we've never done Ron Guidry before, so we will talk a little bit about Louisiana Lightning. And let's see, who else? We've talked Doyle Alexander. Have we talked Bruce Souter? Uh, I don't think so. Now, if we have, it's been a while. Let's talk Bruce Souter. All right, so amongst all of these 
wonderful cards that anyone can overpay for in this faux back rack pack. We'll go with Bruce Suter, Richie Hebner, Paul Russell, and Ron Guidry. So there we go. Those will be the cards that we talk about. Uh, we will talk about the 1979 top set, which is much more memorable than this uh, god-awful rack pack was. And uh, we'll also be answering your questions and uh, taking your comments, too, via our Twitter handle, at Wax and Gumstain. So make sure you join us for the podcast this Friday, April the 10th. We'll make it a good Friday. Hey, yeah, I've been quarantined as you have, and uh, we're all kind of slowly losing our minds. But hopefully we'll provide you some entertainment. Make sure you join us via Audio Boom, Apple Podcasts, all of our platforms as well, as we talk about these dreaded faux back rack packs in 1979 tops. We'll see you then.